Uh, welcome, this is uh, Ad Emmen reporting for Premier Magazine from the third e-science conference in the Amsterdam Arena. And we are here together with um, Anna Lucia Verbonescu, um, who just gave a presentation here. Welcome, Anna. Thank you. Can you tell a little bit about where you're coming from and what you're doing? Um, yes, I am currently an uh, assistant professor at the University of Amsterdam in the Informatics Institute and my background is in high performance computing, um, pretty much at Delft University of Technology and uh, Freie Universiteit in Amsterdam. Okay, we just heard your presentation here about um, heterogeneous computing and uh, when I got the message correctly it is use GPUs but not only the GPUs, also use the CPUs and use them together in a good fashion, is that correct? Yes, this is actually what we have seen in the past um, couple of years. Um, we come from a, after a period where many people have used GPUs for many, many applications and trying to get the most performance out of that. And that was, a, that was a good development. We got interesting performance results. But what we are now advocating is that the GPU is only part of a platform that uses heterogeneous computing. And using the CPU is as important for performance as using the GPU. Because many applications are diverse enough to use both type of devices. And other applications are simply so compute intensive that any additional resource, like a CPU, will be helping in terms of performance. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, give some example of an application that you worked on? So we worked on many scientific computing kernels, starting from the simple matrix uh, operations and linear algebra and going to more um, image processing applications. And um, our most interesting application so far has been an application on um, sound ray tracing, which is actually an algorithm developed by a student at um, Aerospace Engineering in Delft, which we were able to uh, accelerate up to real-time um, computing by using both the CPU and the GPU, um, which was very important for their own research in which they really try to get almost, uh, if you want, virtual reality experience, but for sound, not for video. Mm -hmm. And um, what, what, what was the application about? I saw some airplanes passing by. Yes, the application is a very interesting one. Apparently, um, NLR um, has received a lot of complaints from people living next to the airports that the noise that they are hearing is unbearable, but they could not really validate this uh, claim. So the idea was to actually build an application based on a tablet and a um, headset where you uh, simulate an, air an airplane flying over your head or on various routes. And then in the same time that you're actually seeing this airplane simulated on the sky, you are hearing the real-time noise that this airplane is actually um, making. And that is a very important tool to actually understand whether the claims of people are correct and also to predict where you could, for example, be build houses or not build houses in the vicinity of airports. So, so it's, it's kind of augmented reality. You sit at a place where you normally hear the, the noise, but there's no airplane, but you Make it have a simulation of the airplane and a simulation of the noise. Exactly. And that helps to build the model. Is that correctly? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And and then what you do is uh, speeding up the model so that they can hear it in real time. Exactly. And that was a big challenge because we started from a MATLAB implementation of the student who only proved correctness but uh, who could not prove performance. And by uh, modifying this and by using um, going to more performing, um, yeah, well, better performing programming models and then moving to GPUs and then in the end moving to a combination of CPUs and GPUs we were able to actually achieve real time. Mm -hmm. um, which machine did you use to, to run it uh, actually on? Um, we have just, so the, the simulations we have run are on uh, DAS4, uh, DAS the uh, supercomputing cluster that um, many universities in the Netherlands share. Um, basically a regular gaming GPUs and a regular CPU that anybody had could have at home um, would be sufficient for running the simulation. Of course, the, the cases we used were not necessarily very high resolution, but the more hardware you have, there is no limitation to how high resolution you can do. Are there any other uh, applications that are, uh, are, are that you are currently working on? Yes, we have done a lot of work on community detection, which is also a very interesting uh, application for heterogeneous computing. Um, we have found that there the limitation is actually not the processing power, but the memory and we were able to literally combine the speed of the GPUs, so the, the heavy processing that they have, with the larger amount of memory that CPUs have, and then together we actually showed that community detection can flexibly run on all the hardware you have and get performance increasing, uh, increasingly more performance as you have increasingly more hardware. 
And that was a very interesting result because uh, this basically opens up a lot of opportunities for a more community detection um, algorithms and more um, research in how we actually do community detection, not being limited by the computational resources. Uh, thank you very much for this interview. Thank you. Uh, for Premier Magazine, this was Adam and Reporting.